Welcome to this video where we'll be taking a journey back in time to explore the fascinating world of prehistoric creatures. From massive sea monsters to tiny insects, the prehistoric world was home to a diverse array of weird and wonderful creatures that are unlike anything we see today. In this video, we'll be showcasing 20 of the weirdest prehistoric creatures from the Triassic to the Cenozoic era. We'll be taking a close look at their unique features, behaviors, and adaptations that allowed them to thrive in a world very different from our own. These are the 20 weirdest prehistoric creatures. Number 20. Dino Kyrus. If you lived in southern Mongolia's Gobi Desert about 70 million years ago, you might have been roommates with Dino Kyrus. Dino Kyrus is basically an ostrich dinosaur, and it would have been downright weird to look at. The largest known specimen was about 36 feet long and weighed about 7 tons. The other two examples we found so far were much smaller, with one being about 94% as large and the other about 74%. They had hollow bones to make them lighter, and their arms were massive compared to other bipedal dinosaurs at around 7.9 feet long. They also had three-fingered hands with claws short legs with blunt claws, and tall, sail-like spines on their backs. Their skulls were also odd, measuring over three feet long with a deep lower jaw and a broad bill. So far, experts think the Dinochirus is the largest ostrich dinosaur ever found. But that doesn't mean it posed much of a threat. Because of the duck-like shape of the jaw, experts think it probably foraged in the water for food, so it likely ate fish and plants. It also had a weak bite force, meaning it probably wasn't much of a concern for many other animals that it shared its environment with. Now it's time for the odd topic. Dimetrodon was a prehistoric reptile that lived during the Permian period over 280 million years ago. It was not actually a dinosaur, but rather a synapsid, a group of animals that eventually evolved into modern mammals. Dimetrodon is best known for the sail on its back, made up of elongated spines that may have been used for regulating body temperature or attracting mates. It was a formidable predator with sharp teeth and a powerful bite. Despite going extinct long ago, Dimetrodon Dimetrodon remains a fascinating creature that captures the imagination of paleontologists and dinosaur enthusiasts alike. This is what lived on Earth before dinosaurs. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19. Dunkleosteus if you thought the marine creatures we have today are terrifying, then you clearly have no idea what used to roam our oceans. We'd probably never spend as much time in the water as we do today, that's for sure. The Dunkleosteus used to exist about 358 million years ago during the late Devonian period, and it was a terrifying beast of the deep. It lived around North America, Morocco, Belgium, and Poland, and could grow up to nearly 29 feet long and tip the scales at more than four tons. We have marine creatures today that could grow that big and be harmless, but the Dunkleosteus would have been our worst nightmare. They had a horrendous bite force of more than 1,300 pounds at the tip and 1,600 at the blade edge, meaning we could be pulverized into mincemeat without any effort. The good news is that they had sharp, bony plates rather than teeth. It's believed that there were at least 10 different Dunkleosteus species, which grew to different sizes and inhabited various parts of the world. For example, the D. Riveri would have only grown to about 3.2 feet long, while the D. Torelli was the largest at more than 28 feet. We don't have complete fossils of all discovered species, but I think we know enough, don't you? Number 18. Helicoprion. Walk into the average woodworker's shed, and the buzzsaw can't help but give you the heebie-jeebies. It's loud, powerful, and fast. But imagine if we had to swim with marine life that shared similar features. The Helicoprion fits the bill. The Helicoprion was a shark-like fish with clusters of teeth arranged into spirals and embedded in its lower jaw. It's believed that its unique buzzsaw-like tooth structure made it easy to devour soft-bodied prey, and it might have even helped it to deshell cephalopods for quick and easy snacks. 
We don't have complete fossils of Helicoprion, but we've got enough evidence to believe it lived during the 20 million year period from the Permian period to the Artinskian stage and would have been found worldwide from Russia to Mexico and beyond. And because we don't have complete fossils, scientists have been struggling to picture just how that buzzsaw-like set of pearly whites would have fit inside their mouths. Several sketches have been created over the years, but the consensus these days is that it would have been positioned vertically in the lower jaw, just like an actual buzzsaw. Number 17. Joseph Fortigasia New Yorkers already know what giant rats look like. They've been sharing their state with cat-sized rats for years. But they would recoil in horror if they ever saw the Joseph Fortigasia, an extinct Diomyid rodent from the early Pliocene to the early Pleistocene periods. From the fossils scientists have found, Joseph Fortigasia's skull was nearly two feet long, giving it an overall body length of almost nine feet. It would have probably weighed up to 1,100 pounds. Imagine trying to catch one of them in a regular rat trap. Your house would be turned into a pile of matchsticks. It's also believed that their bite force would have been more than 1,100 pounds at the third molar, which isn't that much different from crocodilians. Joseph Fortigasia would have lived in forested areas near brackish water and rivers and were native to South America. This is believed due to the fossils found in Argentina, Colombia, Uruguay, and Venezuela. In these places, they would have spent much of their time dining on leaves, fruit, and plants. They probably would have also shared their living quarters with animals like ground sloths and glyptodonts, which are extinct, heavily armored armadillos. Number 16. Megalania when an animal has mega in the name, you just know it'll be huge. And the Megalania was. It's an extinct species of giant monitor lizard once known to hang out in Australia during the Pleistocene era. So far, the youngest fossil we've found dates back around 50,000 years ago. It's believed that Megalania was the biggest terrestrial lizard to ever exist, reaching lengths of 23 feet and weighing more than 4,200 pounds. Having one of those crawling up your walls in the middle of the night would be absolutely terrifying. Some experts think their ecology is similar to the Komodo dragons we have today, but obviously on a much larger scale. They would have feasted on medium to large animals, including giant marsupials and reptiles, but wouldn't have turned its nose up at eggs and chicks. Scientists also think that, based on their fossils, these lizards would have had stocky limbs, a heavy set frame, and a massive jaw with serrated, blade-like teeth. It sounds absolutely awful, but it gets worse. The Megalania belongs to the clade Toxicophera, which means that, like the Nile Monitor and Komodo Dragon, it would have been venomous with toxin-secreting oral glands. If the Megalania were to bite anything and use its venom, it would function as an anticoagulant to increase bleeding and hasten system shock. I'm sure most people won't be too concerned that these monsters are no longer with us. Number 15. Dinotherium Dinotherium would have been quite remarkable animals to have around today. They were kind of elephant-like and lived up until the early Pleistocene. While they looked like elephants, their necks were more flexible and their tusks curved downward and backward. Dinotherium lived around East Africa, Europe, and the Indian subcontinent and mainly lived on leaves they found in forested areas. However, it's believed that forested areas being replaced by grassland led to their demise. There just wasn't enough food to sustain them. And that kind of makes sense, because it would have taken a lot of food to keep them alive. From the fossils we found, they would have stood at more than 13 feet tall and weighed upwards of 9 tons. So perhaps not that different from elephants. We've known about this unique animal since the 17th century, when a French surgeon found large animal bones in a field near Lyon, France. The surgeon exhibited the bones in France and Germany as a supposed French monarch's bones until the French National Museum of Natural History took possession. In 1775, researchers identified the bones as belonging to something similar to a mammoth. They were finally named Dinotherium when Johann Jakob von Kaup found a skull and mandible in Germany in 1829. At the time, he believed they were an evolutionary link between mastodonts and sloths. Number 14. Micro Raptor. 
See, here's a creature I could get behind messing with the DNA of to bring back. The Microraptor. It's a small dromaeosaurid dinosaur with four wings that lived up to 120 million years ago. So far, many well-preserved fossils of it have been found in China, so we have a reasonably good insight into what they would have been like. Adult Microraptors would have grown up to around two and a half feet long and weighed 2.2 pounds, making them one of the smallest non-avian dinosaurs to exist. They had long flight feathers on their legs and wings, a thick feather covering on their bodies, and a unique fan in the shape of a diamond on their tails to help with flight stability. Going by the bands of light and dark on some of the specimens that have been found, it's believed they might have had iridescent black coloring. While birds we have today are comfortable in the sky and walking on the ground, experts think life would have been a bit more awkward for the Microraptor. They had feet to help them walk around, but the length of their front wing feathers would have meant that they had a limited range of motion, especially with their feathers hanging on the ground when their arms were in a neutral position. Out of all prehistoric creatures, I have to admit that this is one I would happily bring back if we could have them as pets. Imagine hitching a ride to work or school on the back of one of these. Number 13. Jacolopterus. Jacolopterus was a predatory arthropod that lived from the Pragian to Emsian stages of the early Devonian age. Experts think there were two types of Jacolopterus, one that lived in fresh and brackish water in the Rhineland and another in estuarine environments in Wyoming. Based on fossil evidence, they likely grew up to about eight and a half feet long, meaning they are the biggest arthropod ever found. They would have had large telson, which is the hindmost part of their body, and absolutely massive pincers and forelimbs. They also used their large telsons as rudders when swimming, which was a fairly unique feature. Coming across one in the water would have been quite scary, to be honest. Based on what we know about their compound eyes, which are visual organs in insects and crustaceans, they had excellent eyesight, which meant that they were likely an apex predator of the time. So they not only had their size on their side, but good vision to see both potential threats and delicious snacks. Number 12. Forests or Hassidy. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely impressed with the birds we have today, but when you compare them to Forest Seracity, they're just a little bit boring. I mean, the Forest Seracity used to be called a terror bird. They were among the largest carnivorous flightless birds to ever live and were considered apex predators living in South America during the Cenozoic era. They stood at about 3 feet 10 inches tall and lived up until as recently as 18,000 years ago. Interestingly, these terror birds birds might have been flightless, but they sure knew how to cover a lot of ground. It's believed they lived from Texas to Florida and may have even made their way into Africa. Experts think they are the only known large South American predator to migrate north during the Great American Interchange. Based on fossil evidence, the terror birds would have been fast runners. Combine their speed with their sharp talons, strong necks, and incredible bite force, and they were not to be messed with. It's believed they were incredibly agile predators predators when chasing after small prey, and once they had something in their grasp, they would use the curvature of their beaks to rip flesh from their bodies. They would probably still be here today if it weren't for carnivorous bears, cats, and dogs crossing into South America and increasing competition. Number 11. Dimorphodon most reptiles have one type of teeth, but this is what makes the Dimorphodon stand out. It was a medium-sized pterosaur that lived during the early Jurassic period with two types of teeth in its jaw. Within their large, bulky, 9-inch jaws, they had four or five fang-like teeth in the front of the upper jaw and smaller teeth at the back. The lower jaw also consisted of about 40 small pointed teeth with flattened edges to look like lancets. But this critter also stood out from the crowd for other reasons. It had a tiny brain pan and extremely short wings. It also had a short but strong and flexible neck. The overall size of the Dimorphodon was about 3.3 feet long, but its wingspan was much longer at around 4.6 feet. We've known about the Dimorphodon for quite a long time now, with the first fossil being found in England by fossil collector Mary Anning in Dorset in 1828. The area she found it in is now a World Heritage Site called the Jurassic Coast. After Mary found the fossil, it was acquired by English theologian, paleontologist, and geologist William Buckland. 
He reported on it in a Geological Society meeting and named it a new species. Since then, other Dimorphodon species have been found, with a partial skeleton recovered from siltstones in the La Boca Formation in Mexico. We don't know much about how they lived from the very few fossils we have, but it's believed that they resided in coastal regions and ate insects and perhaps fish. However, some researchers think it might have eaten a variety of small prey. Number 10. Megatherium The sloths we have today are pretty cute and cuddly critters, so much so that we've created plush toy varieties for children to play with. But if you were to gift your child a plush version of the Megatherium, an extinct ground sloth genus, they'd likely have nightmares. Megatherium were endemic to South America and lived during the early Pliocene. They formed part of the sloth family and were so large that only a few other land mammals were comparable. And I'm not talking dog-sized, I'm talking absolutely massive. They could weigh up to 8,800 pounds while standing at about 6 feet 11 inches at the shoulder. They were also about 20 feet long from head to tail. Give a child a plush version of that and it would take up their entire bedroom. They had broad, muscular tails, curved claws on long forelegs, and hairless bodies like elephants. They also had cone-shaped mouths, making it easier for them to be selective with plants and fruits. Megatherium used to live in grassland and woodland environments of South America and generally lived in groups. However, some researchers think they might have also liked to live alone in caves. Yeah, same. Number 9. Elasmosaur if the elasmosaur was here today, it would be a creature of your nightmares. It lived about 80.5 million years ago in North America and was given the name E. Placerus in 1868, which translates to thin plate reptile. That's pretty accurate if you ask me. The elasmosaurus was about 34 feet long and weighed about 2.2 tons, and it had a long, streamlined body with a small head, a horrendously long neck spanning up to 23 feet, a short tail, and weird-looking paddle-like limbs. Out of all animals with long necks in the world, I'm looking at you, giraffe, the Elasmosaurus is the longest to have ever lived. It also has the second biggest number of neck vertebrae in any critter at a crazy 72. It's believed that they had flippers to help them adapt to aquatic life, and they used these for swimming. It's not actually known what their long necks were for, and they weren't even all that flexible, which means it's not like they could have helped them above the water. Some experts think they might have been quite handy for feeding, but we might never know. They feasted on marine invertebrates and small fish and would have snatched them out of the water with their long teeth. They also had gastroliths, which are stomach bones, to help them digest their food. Number 8. Thylacosmolus Many creatures of the past were unique and unusual, but perhaps few are as absurd as the Thylacosmolus. This creature was a saber-toothed metatherian mammal from South America that lived around the late Miocene to Pliocene epochs. Interestingly, even though they looked similar to the saber-toothed cats that we're familiar with, they were more closely related to marsupials. They only looked like saber-toothed cats due to evolution, and studies have found that despite their scary-looking teeth, they had a low bite force, as in it was much weaker than that of a leopard. Scientists haven't been able to agree on their size, but they could weigh between 180 and 330 pounds, or around the same size as the jaguars we have today. They had saber-like canine teeth that would grow throughout their life and a weird-shaped mouth to accommodate them. And even though they probably weren't as strong as some of the animals we have today, like leopards and jaguars, they still sat near the top of the food chain. They would have immobilized their prey before using their strong neck muscles to help them drive their teeth into soft tissue. Number 7. Nyctosaurus Many prehistoric creatures we hear about are massive, but that is not the case with Nyctosaurus. Also known as Bat Lizard or Night Lizard, they are small pterosaurs from the Midwestern United States that lived in an area that used to have a shallow sea. They were considered medium-sized, but have often been compared to modern-day albatrosses. They had long wings with a wingspan of up to 6.6 .6 feet long, and they weighed about 4.2 pounds. Their overall body length was approximately 1.2. 21 feet. Based on what we've learned from fossils, Nyctosauruses would have grown quickly after hatching from eggs. It's believed that the adults weren't that much larger
larger than the young ones and could have reached their adult size in under a year. The only real discernible difference between babies and adults was the crest. So far, five reasonably complete skulls have been found, and the only one without a crest is a juvenile. Some scientists have suggested that the crest, which looks like an antler, supported a skin head sail for flight. There isn't any evidence that they had skin sails on their heads, but a type of membranous attachment would have helped their aerodynamics during flight. Seeing that fly through the sky would be both mesmerizing and terrifying at the same time. Number 6. Liopleurodon we already have some weird and wonderful marine creatures, and the Liopleurodon is yet another we can add to the list. They were massive, carnivorous marine reptiles and apex predators that lived in Europe's middle to late Jurassic seas. Scientists estimate they grew up to about 22 feet, but they see no reason why they couldn't have also grown much larger. Most people first learned about the existence of the now extinct Liopleurodon when it was featured on a BBC Walking with Dinosaurs episode in 1999. The show described the Liopleurodon as an 82-foot-long, 330,000-pound predator, which blew people's minds. Since then, we've learned that those estimates were quite exaggerated. The largest known species was only 33 feet long and are thought to have only weighed up to about 3,700 pounds. That's obviously much less than the previously thought 330,000 pounds. Liopleurodons were considered excellent swimmers, especially since they had four flippers which they used for propulsion. And while swimming robots have shown that the flippers wouldn't have been an efficient way of moving through the water, it would have allowed for incredible acceleration, which would be all they need as ambush predators of the deep. Number 5. Quetzalcoatlus Quetzalcoatlus, from North America during the late Cretaceous period, was one of the largest flying animals of its time. It came from the pterosaur family and had an incredibly long, stiff neck. They were absurd-looking creatures, to say the least. It's believed that the first fossil was found at Big Bend National Park in Texas by a geology graduate student from the University of Texas at Austin, Douglas A. Lawson, who uncovered it in 1971. He found a partial wing, and it likely came from a Quetzalcoatlus Coatlus with a 33-foot wingspan, so an absolutely enormous critter. But that wasn't his only discovery. Douglas went on to find a second fossil about 25 miles from the first. We've learned a lot about these remarkable pterosaurs from these fossils and others. Their wingspan size has been estimated at 36 to 39 feet, and they would have stood at a little under 10 feet at the shoulders. Some studies have also found that they might have weighed about 143 pounds based on wingspans and body lengths. While their wingspans were undoubtedly impressive, their skulls were also a point of curiosity for researchers. Quetzalcoatlus had very sharp and pointy beaks, which is the exact opposite of what scientists initially thought. They believed they would have had blunt snouts, which is now considered inaccurate. Going by their size and wingspan, they would have been amazing flyers, and there's nothing to suggest we couldn't have trained them to take us places if they were around today. Number 4. Therizinosauridae Therizinosauridae were therizinosaurid dinosaurs that lived throughout Asia, North America, and much of the supercontinent of Laurasia in the late Cretaceous period. They were large and robust animals, and the largest genera within the therizinosauridae group could grow between 23 and 33 feet long. They had rounded and broad stomachs, thick hind legs with four-toed feet, and strong arms with incredible hand flexibility. Perhaps their most unique feature was their hand claw. Claws. These would have given them increased wrist flexibility to help them forage for food. The hand claws also might have helped researchers identify their footprints in later years, too. Surprisingly, these therizinosauroid dinosaurs had quite a few things in common with birds, with the most notable feature being their ear structures. They have bird-like semicircular ear canals and extended cochleas. Birds use extended cochleas to hear a range of frequencies, so it's likely that these creatures used them for that plus to help them with balance. Most Therizinosauridae have been found in Asia, especially around Mongolia and China, but we are now discovering remains outside of Asia and into North America. Evidence such as this strengthens the idea that Alaska was a gateway between two continental landmasses and that there was a land bridge. Number 3. 
Pterodostro. The Pterodostro would not be an animal to win any beauty contests. It was a pterosaur from South America that lived about 105 million years ago and had weird, bristle-like teeth that hadn't been seen in any other pterosaur. The first fossil was a thigh bone found in the late 1960s in Argentina, but more than 750 specimens have now been found. That has allowed us to learn more about this prehistoric creature than many others. We now know that they had elongated skulls up to 11 inches long, with their eye sockets making up the majority of their skulls. They also had a long snout and a lower jaw that would curve upwards so that the snout was perpendicular to the jaw joint. They would have had about 1,000 bristle-like teeth within their jaws, and they probably used these to eat algae, plankton, crustaceans, and other small creatures. Their teeth are definitely a standout feature, but there are plenty of other unique ones. They had gizzard stones in their stomachs, which have never been found in other terrestrial and they became half the size of an adult in just two years. Some people also believe they were nocturnal, following a similar eating pattern to anseriform birds that often eat at night. Number 2. Tanistrifius it's always sad when animals go extinct, but I'm not shedding a tear for the Tanistrifius. This, this 20-foot-long archosauromorph reptile looks just as terrifying in fossil form as it would if it were still alive today. They had extremely long necks, which measured about 9.8 feet long. That's more than the length of their tails and bodies combined. They also had about 12 or 13 long vertebrae. They were either aquatic or semi-aquatic but fossils have mostly been found in semi-aquatic areas, where terrestrial reptile fossils are rarely seen. Most Tanistrifius fossils have been found in Europe, especially around Italy and Switzerland, but some have also been found in China and the Middle East, dating back to the late Triassic. Scientists were never quite able to agree on what they eat. Still, you'd probably rightly assume that they were pisivorous reptiles, which means they eat fish. They had narrow snouts with long, interlocking, conical teeth possibly an adaptation to help them catch fish and other aquatic creatures. Scientists have also found parts of cephalopod tentacles in their stomachs, which would support this theory. We still don't know for sure if they're entirely aquatic or not, but the lack of flexibility in their neck supports the idea of them spending most of their time in the water. Number 1. Basilosaurus Basilosaurus, or King Lizard, was a substantial predatory whale that lived up to 41.3 million years ago. Researchers once believed it was a giant reptile, which is why it has the saurus suffix, but it is, in fact, a marine mammal. They were once common in the Tethys Ocean and were one of the largest animals of the Paleogene. It was also a top predator, thinking nothing of preying on large fish, sharks, and even the Dorodon dolphin. Basilosaurus whales could measure up to 66 feet long and weigh over 1.5 tons. Now, you might assume their size and ability to prey on pretty much any other marine creature would keep them alive, but it didn't. They went extinct during the eocene oligocene extinction event. It's believed this was due to meteor impacts, sudden climate change, and possibly volcanic activity. Sure, some of the more common dinosaurs we know about, like T-Rex, are pretty unusual and downright weird, but they haven't been the most bizarre creatures to walk the Earth. If you could have any of these creatures back, which one would you choose and why? I'd be lining up for a pet Microraptor. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!